Hello and uh, welcome to Politics Today. And in this programme today, we'll be asking, are we heading for a third national COVID-19 lockdown? Freedom Day is finally upon us, but it uh, doesn't feel like Freedom Day when over half a million Brits are forced to self-isolate because of the government's £40 billion NHS track and tracing app. So we'll be asking, what can we do as Christians in this time of crisis for our government and our national crisis for our nation. So joining me in this programme today, I'm joined by Alistair Scott, who is the UK Director for Joseph's Storehouse, as well as David Hughes' uh, Prayer for Parliament. So gentlemen, uh, welcome to the programme. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I'll start off with, with you, Alistair. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we've now passed the day as of this recording, whereby our Freedom Day is here but no one's celebrating. Uh, I think uh, looking at all the news reports, we are now facing, for example, we now have the third highest rates of COVID-19 in the world. Uh, only India and Indonesia are above us. The Americans have put a travel ban on us. Uh, we've, we're finding that a government is now allowing us to make decisions regarding COVID-19, whether we choose to wear a mask or whether we don't wear a mask. Social distancing has gone. We already saw... Uh, over 60,000 people attend the European final of the Euros between mm -hmm. England and Italy and people going out to, to nightclubs and clubbing and uh, going out to restaurants and it feels like life is normal. Uh, but we're finding through the government's uh, tracing app the, that it spent £40 billion on that uh, half a million people have isolated this week. Um, so what's your assessment on where we think we are politically and spiritually regarding this global pandemic COVID-19? I think the easiest word to describe is challenging, really. I mean, I'm a great believer in what the word of God says, and I don't like criticizing governments, you know, because we know Romans 13 says all, all authority is from God and chosen by God. Uh, but the important thing is to be praying for the wise counsel for our leaders. And it does seem this government is, it's easy to, for, to be a critic uh, of what's going on, but there seems to be things going on that are a bit worrying. Uh, as you say, there's been this massive grouping of people for the, the football and the Wimbledon tennis and so on. And, and, and yet we seem to get these confused messages as to, you know, relying on people to be uh, self-isolating or doing the right thing. It, we don't have a history of, of doing that. And our government needs to make a choice of where we're going and back it. Because, of course, it's awful to, to hear of school school children not getting into schools because of being pinged. It's the N-word at the moment. Um, the economy is still stuck because people are not able to go to work. I mean, I heard the statistics even this morning of the high figure of people who have missed school and are not able to return to work. And it's almost affecting the NHS because they're being pinged and they're having to have special permission to go back to work even if they are pinged. So it is a confused situation. But my heart is always, let's pray for our leaders because that's what the, the Bible commands us to do, urges us to do. It's not a commandment, but it's something that as believers, we know the power of prayer and praying for our leaders and particularly our Prime Minister at this time f to be surrounded by godly counsel because I, I know many, he's hearing so many sides of so many things and we really got to pray that he would stand up for what is right in God's eyes. But it is a very, very challenging time. I really do believe that for us as a nation. Uh, and David, mm. obviously through your work for Prayer for Parliament, you, you, you pray for our politicians, you pray for our government, you pray for our, our, our government uh, institutions including... Um, offices of state as well. So the fact we are recording this program and our prime minister is in self-isolation, he's in Chequers, it's not a bad place to be <laughs> self-isolated. Um, we also see that Rishi Shunak, our, our chancellor, is also uh, self-isolating and that our health secretary, Savit Javid, has also caught COVID-19, so he's self-isolating. So you kind of see that this is uh, a big mess, particularly as the government was building up to this big announcement of Freedom Day where virtually all the COVID-19 restrictions would be uh, would be lifted mm -hmm. and yet we're seeing the number of cases that we are the third highest in the world um, and this could have something to do with the fact that the, the Boris allowed 20,000 Indians into the country mm -hmm. spreading this Indian variant so when you look at it take a step back we are in a real time of real national crisis and just when we thought that COVID-19 was coming to an end it looks like it's accelerating. I think it comes down to the fact that nobody's woken up to the fact that God exists. Yeah. 
Um, and I also think the church has an awful lot to answer for because they're not really in encouraging or, or pointing out in general, if you take the church in general. Um, I think a lot of the church is a bit of a laughing stock. They're not sort of repenting. And so, that, you know, it's in uh, um, 2 Chronicles 7.14, if we would repent of all our sins and everything, God will heal the land. Well, God obviously isn't healing the land. He's letting the land go downhill um, because at the end of the day, uh, we're in a situation where, wait a minute, why should we be taking our masks off when we go on transport, when we go into shops, and so many people are going ill. Um, it doesn't make sense. So I think the government um, and those in authority have lost their way. Mm -hmm. um, they're not helped by the church leaders. And at the end of the day, um, it, with the nation has to start praying and interceding. Yep. Um, stand on the word of God uh, and God will act. But we're not doing that, so he's not able to. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, Alistair, I, mm. I, I agree with the sentiments that you said earlier about the need to pray for our, our leaders. I, I think that's a scriptural command, uh, that, they would have, that we would live in peace and that our, our, our government would have wisdom. But you have to see that when the government is kind of pushing through these DIY abortions and the way that it's yeah. been dealing with many problems of the pandemic, and it seems the impression that the public are getting, including myself, it's one rule for them and one rule for everyone else, because when... Uh, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson or Rishi Sunak both got pinged, they said they weren't going to self-isolate mm -hmm. and then realised the political fallout if they didn't. And also the fallout with Matt Hancock as well, uh, you know, filmed having an affair as well when he should be on uh, parliamentary duty, uh, uh, particularly as health secretary. So there's a, there's a lot of... You know, there's a lot of confusion in the heart of our government. I think that's the best way to describe mm. it. And, um, you know, it doesn't look like we're getting out of this crisis anytime soon, despite the number of uh, restrictions being lifted. I think for sure the confidence in government is at, a, at its lowest, uh, partly because you don't seem to get there's a conviction amongst our parliamentarians as they were maybe 50 years ago or 30 years ago. Uh, and that's a sad thing and it's a, it's a hard place to win back because when people lose confidence with the government, because when you think what does the Bible talk about government, it talks about being aware and concerned for the welfare of the people. But you don't seem to see, not, not only our government, but I mean look at what happened in the USA recently. Uh, and in the EU, EU uh, nations, there are no longer are governments really concerned as they should be. I'm not saying they're not concerned at all, as they should be for the welfare of all the people, not just those who support their, uh, their politics. Uh, and and, and that's, that's a frightening thing. And again, you know, it, it needs, as, as David has just said, we need to be repenting as a nation. We need to be repenting as a people, as a church. We need to be standing up and being counted. Because, you know, the Bible's clear that, you know, it, everything begins in the church. The cleansing uh, situation will start within the church. And then as we get more and more down on our knees and pray, seek his face, as, as 2 Chronicles 7, 15, uh, 14 tells us, you know, turn from our wicked ways. He will hear our prayers, forgive us sins and heal the land. But I, th I find that we're living in an, in an a age where people don't even acknowledge there is sin. It's choice. It's not evil. It's not good. It's not bad. It's not good. It's a choice. And that's a dangerous place to be uh, because the Bible is very clear what is sin. And, uh, and we just need to acknowledge we need to turn turn from those ways and stand in the gap for our nation, pray for our leaders in the church and in the politicians as well, that truly they would, and the fear of the Lord is what we need poured yeah, out absolutely. on our nation, I, on our government, on I my life. I think also they're so focused on this uh, science, science stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's as if science is their God. Yeah. Wrong one. Mm. Well, they spent 40 billion on this track and tracing app. Mm. 40 billion taxpayers' money that uh, could be spent on schools or hospitals or education. It seems that it's too effective and can actually ping people that are in a, a, a neighbor's house through the walls. So effectively, then that means that this has a direct knock-on effect on our economy with many more people having to self-isolate for 10 days, including those people who have had two vaccinations. So it seems that the government's policy is all kind of messed up here. Um, but the, the also, which is confounded by the pact of bringing over, t over uh, uh, 20,000 Indians in with the country, which clearly has spread the, uh, the Delta variant uh, or the Indian variant. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're in a problem. It also looks like Boris is, is losing control a little bit. 
Well, so Ian Brady, I, I saw him with the Nigel Farage on a, a programme just recently. And um, he's obviously, in Boris's eyes, a rebel because he's, he's standing up against the dictatorial aspect of the, of the ministers and the government. And uh, I think it, 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 there's got to be a lot of accountability. A lot of the conservatives are, are saying, wait a minute, are we a conservative party anymore? Um, and they're not really what we, what we wanted. And the other thing I think they brought up the other day is for the people who've had two vaccines, which supposedly work, mm. we're not being given the freedom that we, we, we expect, which gives even more confusion to people. Absolutely. Mm. And Alice, it's also important to, to uh, point out what the uh, new Israeli Prime Minister said uh, over the weekend of this recording, uh, Naftali Bennett, that he mm. expects Israel to go into another third national mm. lockdown within weeks. And, and yet it was only a couple of months ago that the Israelis were throwing away their face masks. This is the end of COVID-19. And yet they're seeing a kind of rapid mm. rise in, in COVID cases. Um, and if Israel was ahead of us, then surely this means it's going to happen. happen here because we've already seen that the French and I think the Dutch government have actually shut down nightclubs because yeah. the cases are increasing. Mm. And it just seems that this, this problem is a problem that our governments around the world are failing to get to grips with or don't even know how to handle and deal with. Yeah, I think this is true. Uh, I was a, in Uganda on a ministry trip when, when the lockdown came and it was about to come in. And, and traveling into Uganda and out of Uganda, I saw restraints uh, on the border controls greater than I saw when I arrived back at Heathrow. Uh, and I think this is the problem. Our history as a, as a nation or the, the politics, the leaders, has been too slow to shut things down. Uh, and, and therefore, this whole thing, as you talked about earlier, with the, the Delta variant, it's come in because people were allowed to come in who had been in India, where it was, it was coming in from. So, I mean, our, our government needs to move faster, act quicker, and do the right thing quicker in order to keep things in control. And, and as you say, you know, it's supposed to be Freedom Day yesterday, but there is absolutely uh, total confusion. People are mixed up, and it's, it doesn't look like a freedom. Uh, you know, even traveling down today, it, it, it looked very different. Um, people were still wearing the masks and so on, and, and, and rightly so. I mean, that's one of the things, isn't it? You, you have to be aware that no matter what you think, there may be somebody else. You know, putting somebody else before yourself is a very important part of our biblical teaching. Absolutely. And there'd be other people who are more vulnerable and more concerned. And, you know, we should be acting together to help those who are maybe not as strong as ourselves. So it's a, it is, it's very challenging. Another thing I was upset about, well, in fact, last night on the news, the Freedom mm. Night, they showed, and you, a lot of people on this channel might have seen it, where they showed the nightclubs opening up mm. at midnight. And it was a recipe for disaster. Mm. And one, one's heart went out to those people. Um, you know, they're young, they haven't been, well, may not have had the two vaccines. Um, they're looking at everything in the world and really couldn't care less other than the fact that they don't want to be out there mm. doing everything in the world. Just think they're immune from it. That's the thing. That's the problem. Doesn't think it'll affect them, but will affect other people. But That's the big I, I just want to draw you to an interesting um, Times uh, uh, headline here. It says, U-turn on staying in isolation. And the Times has done a, a survey uh, on what people think about the COVID-19 restrictions and Freedom Day, which is interesting. So the first question is, do you think that uh, lifting most of the remaining COVID-19 restrictions in England is the right or wrong thing to do today? And right said 31%, wrong said 55%, and 14% said don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, if the relaxation of the COVID uh, coronavirus rules leads to a large increase in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations, who, if anyone, do you think will mainly be blamed for this? 42% said government, 42% said individuals, and 50% said don't know. And I'll just read the third one. It says, do you think that people who have received both doses of the vaccination should or should not have to self-isolate if they come into contact with someone who has tested positive for the virus? So 40% said yes and 43% no, and 17 said they didn't know. So, you know, um, so here we, here we are. It's, it, it seems like the whole situation is in a, a complete model. Why would you just completely open up 
all the restrictions mm. at a time when cases are moving rapidly. And the government's argument, I think, effectively is, is saying that we're going to face another tough winter again. Um, let's try and give everyone as much as they can herd immunity. Apparently, to news reports, 90% of the British public now have herd immunity. Um, so it just doesn't really make sense while they're doing this. And if we look for Israel's example, then we could be heading for a third yeah. COVID-19 national lockdown in the autumn. Yeah. So does any of this make sense? It looks very likely that it's going to happen. It does tend to follow what's happening in Israel and India and so on comes back in here. Uh, but, but, you know, the, the government's slogan is, if not now, when, isn't it? This is this, this, this four or five words. <laughs> and uh, there has to be a, a right time to do the right thing and not just to take this risk. It's especially, you know, governments are supposed to be acting on behalf of the people. And if your statistics there are right, the majority of the people are saying, don't take the restrictions off because there's a fair element around concern for health issues. And, you know, most of us are... are as believers, we, we believe we are healed and we walk in healing. But there are other peoples who don't, and they're the ones we need to be concerned about. There are people in our own church who are more vulnerable than others, and, and we need to have that heart. And the government needs to have that heart and, and, and know what the pulse of the people are. Uh, and the pulse of the people are, let's be a little bit more uh, concerned for the future and not follow the trend of the young people because as you said earlier the young people think nothing's going to touch us I mean I was that age at one point and I thought the world could never uh, touch me but well, that's not every young people I don't want to stigmatize all no, young people true. but um, I think that's important to do that yeah. but there are a lot of young people that mm. uh, are not obeying the rules and uh, yeah. couldn't really care less and this is I want to do this doesn't affect me so I, I should be right so mm. but um, but David looking at this situation though if we look at what is going on in terms of the government policy regarding COVID-19 and these restrictions and giving us these uh, you know um, greater freedoms that we haven't really experienced really since March of 2019 when the national lockdown came in the COVID-19 restrictions came in and then at the same, same time, we're seeing a massive rise of cases, and we have the third largest number of cases in the world. But obviously, the issue is the hospitalizations. There's less hospitalizations than there were before, even though that number might be going up. Um, doesn't this really show the kind of spiritual state that our nation is in, that effectively it's in a real mess? <laughs> um, Absolutely. Mm. And the only way out of this is a real time of genuine prayer and repentance and national prayer, genuine, not about, not about egos, not about promoting someone or promoting this ministry or this ministry, but just getting on our knees before the Lord mm. and saying, have mercy on our nation, uh, because our nation is so tied up in this globalist agenda now um, that, uh, you know, that, that Brexit is Brexit name only effectively now. There's got to be uh, a tremendous wake up call for this nation. Um, and First of all, we also need unity in the nation. And, and of course, with Northern Ireland being ostracized through the protocol, uh, that needs prayer. There's so much needs prayer at the moment. Um, prayer is the answer, but the spiritual spirituality of this nation is probably at an all time low. But what the answer is, I think the Lord is just, there's gonna come a time when he'll say enough is enough and something else is going to come to wake people up. What it'll, it'll be, I don't know, but mm. it will come. Yeah. And if, if we look at, for example, biblical models, we go mm. back to the Old Testament, we, we look at how Israel dealt with Israel uh, in, the, uh, in the Old Testament. What seems very clear is he does bring plagues, he does bring Testing. pandemics mm -hmm. to bring the nation to repentance. And then what we usually find out is this is then followed on by war. Yeah. Um, and the way the global situation is looking extremely precarious with a, a very um, revitalized kind of Russia as well as China um, and even uh, Iran heading for a kind of nuclear weapon. So the security situation in the world is incredibly precarious. Mm. Uh, and yet our government and other nations around the world have kind of abandoned the concept of the nation state and are wanting to push towards globalism, globalism. Uh, which is their ultimate goal is to create mm. a one world government that was uh, you know, mentioned um, by, uh, given the vision to John on the island of Pathos, and that's where we get the book of Revelation for. Mm. It seems that we're heading very, very fast in, into those days, and um, how much freedom we have left as Christians to proclaim the gospel and tell the truth uh, could be numbered. 
Well, you can see that is definitely being uh, we're trying to be silenced, but you know the wonderful thing is that, as it t tells us to do in Isaiah 62, we will not be silenced. Uh, but but it's true. Everything is is coming against the the voice of the kingdom uh, being listened to. And, and as you said earlier, you know when you read the Old Testament, you read Joel, you read Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, it, it's very clear that God is the God who shakes the nations. You know it's not the enemy. God uh, allows it to happen. Why? Because He loves people. And he's desiring for people to turn around and repent. That's repent just means turn around and go the opposite direction you're going on. And it's his love that is making the nation shake. And it's political, it's geographical, it's it's in every area. And with the pandemic, the Lord has the solution, but the the nations need to listen to the voice of the Lord. Amen. We need to have true prophets in the nation speaking to our governments, because that was the work of a Jeremiah and Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, and so on in the Old Testament. They actually challenged the leaders. They didn't ov obviously always get listened to, but they spoke the Lord's voice. And those who followed survived and came through. Those who didn't, unfortunately, came to a judgment situation. So we really need a, a governmental people, a government leadership that listens to the voice of the Lord. And as a church, as David said earlier, we need to be the church that hears the voice of the Lord and actually speaks what God is putting in our hearts to speak. I mean, the end times is, is only round the corner. Yep. I think we're already there. I don't know about round oh, the corner. No, no. I think, uh, <laughs> Could I, be I any think we're, we're rapidly heading, heading well, no, heading we are rapidly it. heading there, but I think there's, uh, there's a lot more that's going to yeah. start shaking. I mean, as a Christian, we know it's there, but you know, you talk, talk to the people who don't know, uh, they haven't been shaken enough. They haven't been woken up enough. Mm. But also, when it comes to spiritual leadership in this country, uh, the head of the Church of England, Justin Welby, is, is wanting a sabbatical. Uh, he hasn't put any pressure on the government or any press releases to say that churches should remain open for a day uh, uh, for, for prayer and intercession for this nation. Um, and instead, churches have been forced to go onto Zoom. Some are opening now and opening up uh, kind of restrictions, but it, it's not quite the same. Not being able to sing in church either and worship God. I mean, you know, even with previous, they probably didn't even do this in the Black Plague, and that was far deadlier than what we faced mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so even in the press recently, he said, he, you know, he, he wouldn't admit that far, our Heavenly Father is male. It could be male or female. Or female. Did you see that? Was, yeah. yeah. So that, therefore, sure. even within the Church of England, there's moral confusion because yes. we're moving away so much from our, our, our biblical understanding of God's word. And as a result, we're paying the consequences. Mm. Um, what do you think it's going to take, um, Alistair, for the, for the church to wake up to the reality of what we're in? Because there seems to be a complete disconnect between what is actually happening in the, in the world that we're living in today and church wanting to play church. It's such a challenge, isn't it? It's, uh, because you seem to you see things happen, and you think surely this must be enough. But then you read Revelations, and you see that people are still uh, lifting up their fist and blaming God for everything, or, or not believing that it's God. But I think it just needs a, an incredible move of the Holy Spirit, because everything in the natural's happened. I mean, you, you, what more could God do? in the natural to get hearts turned back to him. But, but it just needs another Holy Spirit revival to hit our land, open up the eyes. I mean, we prayed earlier before the meeting, you know, that, that we should have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand what the Lord is doing. And we really do need to pray for the Spirit of the Lord just to move and bring that conviction, because man can't do it. We can continue to, to stand in the gap and pray and, and challenge, but it's the Holy Spirit that really has to bring that conviction on a government or a, a large group of people, like it's happened in, in past revivals. You know, look what happened in the Welsh revival over a hundred years ago. You know, the, the nation prisons the cells were closed because no one was, the pubs were shut and people were meeting to praise and worship. It seems, you know, where we stand at the moment, you think, could that really ha happen again? Of course it can, if the few of us would stand and continue to cry to God, God, we need your revival again. And that's what we're finding in our prayer groups that, yeah. and with prophecies that actually, I believe God's moving, or we believe God's moving away from the recognized church, from you know where we go to church, that mm. more to get into relationship groups. And so, you know, you have groups of intercessors, you have home, home groups and... Um, a bit like the underground... Personal 
church movement mm. in China. Absolutely. So maybe it could yes. come to that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, David, uh, we've got about five minutes left of the program, and, and, and you're our intercessor here, and I'm sure that we have a lot of intercessors watching mm. this program today. How should they be praying for this nation at this time? Because there is no doubt that we are in a national crisis, we are in a national emergency, our government doesn't know how to handle this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are facing massive globalist pressures, we're already facing this massive pressure, uh, digital pressure, um, and you've got about two minutes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> as I said last time, basically what we've found in the last year, that, or even less, the new way we're getting together is we get together in a small group, we're about 12 or 13 in, our, in a group, and of those powerful enough to hear, literally hear from the Lord, we pray in tongues and we have a quiet time, and then we all come together and say, what is the Lord telling each of us? And it's rather like a jigsaw puzzle. Every single person has a part of that puzzle. Mm. And it always, each week, amazes us because it turns out to be the right puzzle, no odd, odd bits that are the wrong. And, and then we pray into it. And but what we found that way is we, we really do hear what is on God's agenda, what he wants us to pray for, specifically for the country or one particular area. And I can say that it's just be relational. And also, because when you're in a group, as it says in Corinthians, you, you know, you're part of the members of the body. And then if one body gets ill or, or something goes wrong, you can support them as well. Because we, as, as times get more and more difficult, we need to be able to support ourselves and literally have strong relationship with ourselves as well as with God. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And I've been reading in Acts recently, in Acts 1, it, it talks about how the disciples after Jesus' resurrection were united in one accord. Mm. Um, and that's probably what we need today, isn't Absolutely. it? But based on biblical values, nothing else. Yeah, no compromising the word. The word is the word. It's the standard we have to stand with. You know, it doesn't change. Uh, and we need to have that unity. Pray for unity in the body. That's very, very important. And unity by the Spirit of the Lord, because that'll bring about a change in our nation, for sure. Alistair, David, thank you so much for being my guest on uh, this week's uh, Politics Today. And I uh, just want to thank you for watching uh, today's programme. Uh, you know, let's be clear, our, our government is in crisis, our nation is in crisis, and when our nation is in trouble, uh, the only answer is to turn to the Almighty and ask for his help and his deliverance. And if we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, then we might see that deliverance. So keep praying for our nation and our government. I want to thank you for watching this edition of Politics Today.